Welcome back to the Fight Pit, ladies and gentlemen. It is your boy, the highest in the room, Drew Sizzle. I've got Sean, Mr. Bad Beats, and I got the man, Matt himself, Matt Talks MMA, and we are here for the UFC 300 reaction slash UFC fight night, Nicolau versus Perez. We live, ladies and gentlemen. It feels so good to be back. We have, uh, it feels like we have been gone for years. It feels like an eternity since uh, UFC 300 episode. And uh, we got a week off. We got, uh, we got a little bit of a break. We got some time to kind of reflect and, uh, and, and let it all soak in. Uh, but it's time to get back to it, folks. We got our UFC 300 reaction and then going right into our next UFC fight night, Mateus Nicolau versus Alex Perez. But before we get into the thick of it, I've got to let you know and give a shout out to our sponsor, PillowFight.co. You know the drill, everybody. Sleep is a third of your life. You got to take it seriously. If you're not getting good sleep, it's going to affect everything else that's going on in your life. I don't know about you guys, but if I'm tired, I'm cranky, I am sore, I am fatigued, I am not a happy camper. Making sure that you have the proper sleep set up can make all the difference in the world. Pillow Fight is blissfully soft and shockingly supportive. Their commitment to premium foams and fibers provides superior comfort, all while being soft enough to cradle you to sleep as if Max Holloway just pointed to the ground in the last 10 seconds. You're going to need a pillow from Pillow Fight for that. It's worth every penny to invest in your rest. They don't skimp on the details, neither should you. Innovative sleep designs and detailed craftsmanship means their pillows improve sleep and they are also obsessed with making a difference. Every purchase from Pillow Fight allows them to donate pillows where they are needed most. So thank you very much to Pillow Fight for sponsoring this episode. Visit pillowfight.co to order and for more information. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, is, has 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 there been any any like big news in MMA the last couple weeks? I didn't I didn't notice. I didn't notice if anything crazy happened. Um, <laughs> this is uh, we were talking about it before the episode started. UFC 300. Uh, we are still experiencing a UFC 300 hangover right now. This is um, this for uh, you know to, to put it in in layman's terms this is going to be our little hair of the dog we got to revisit ufc 300 a little bit just to kind of uh uh even us out you know and help us to to move on and and not have such a uh, uh a shock to our system uh trying to get over that that was man i, I know that we talked a lot about um 289 299 300 uh sean and matt specifically you guys did some fantastic comparisons and shorts uh leading up to it and since uh i don't know if i'm alone on this one or not but i am happy to say that i think that ufc 300 did live up to the hype after all um that was one of the most incredible things that we've ever seen inside the octagon uh it was difficult for me like i said i there were two fights after the max holloway and justin gaethje fight it, they might as well have just ended the event after that i i was in a different universe trying to pay attention to those fights and they were fantastic fights they were amazing fights and that's it just goes to show how insane the sport is and how amazing the sport is and how much we love it i mean in what do you have any idea how crazy of a performance you have to have to for Alex Pereira to be the main event and to get a first round one shot knockout over a former champion and nobody gives a shit? That's just absolutely insane. There's no no better way to describe UFC 300 than just Max Holloway. It was the fitting 
BMF fight, a fitting BMF finish. Um, we'll start with the undercard on this one. Any big points on the undercard? Anything that came out of it? Any matchups you might want to make? And we'll just work our way up to the main event. Sean, I'm going to go to you first. Um, Garbrandt and Figueredo opened up the card, and it was just action, 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 action ever since. Um, start with the prelim, the first fight of the night. Let me know your thoughts and and anything anything you need to get off your chest coming out of that. Well, that was an incredible fight because Cody Garbrandt looked like Cody Garbrandt. He looked great on the outside. He was piecing him up. Figueredo even looked wobbled once in the first round, and I was like, "Ooh, oh, this!" Uh, I'm like, "I'm like, my pick's about to go downhill real quick," and I'm like, I don't <laughs> even mind it. I don't mind it because who doesn't like Cody? Like. <clears throat> Figueredo plays the bad guy very well. He makes you want to hate him. But then at the end of the round, he got the takedown. And it. And then in the second round, same thing. Got the submission. Figueredo definitely looks like a bantamweight. I love it. I want it. I, I know saying take a step up in competition is kind of disrespectful to Cody because he's not ranked and everything. But I do want him to fight someone that's above him in the ranking instead of someone that's not ranked. Even though Cody deserved to fight a big name on UFC 300. Look what Cody has done for the company. Uh, just like why you have Bobby Green and Jim Miller on this card. Because of what they've done for this company. So I am I I think my matchmaking for this, uh, for Davis and Figueredo, I'll, I'd love to see him fight uh, Cheeto Vera. That, that would be my fight. Ooh, uh, banger. Like, you got two guys that have power. Um, Cheetah will be a little bit of a longer fighter than Davis and Figueredo, but I, the ground game's always been a, can also affect Cheeto a little bit. So I would like to see how uh, how he can deal with that, and definitely with a guy that's coming up from bantam uh, to bantamweight. Even though this will be his third fight now, I just think that's a really good matchup. I think fireworks will happen. I do not see that being a boring fight whatsoever. That's a sick fight. That's a sick fight. Former champion versus a guy who just contended for the title. I like it. I like it. Um, as far as the the rest of the prelims, what was uh, the standout before we move to Matt? I'm going to get you in just a sec, brother. Uh, Sh Sean, if you had to give a fight of the night candidate on just the early prelims and the prelim card, uh, I know who my pick would be. I'm interested in if there was one standout fight on those prelims that you think, uh, if Gaethje and Holloway didn't exist, who do you think got fight of the night? Well, in the early prelims, I think it, it has to be Bobby Green versus Jim Miller. Like the first yeah. round, Jim Miller looked like he could have stopped Bobby Green. And then the second and third round, uh, Bobby Green did kind of what I was saying is I felt like he was just going to piece him up from the outside. But Give it to Jim Miller. He didn't give up. He's like, dude, you can hit me all you want. I'm going to come forward. We're going to fight. And even at the end of the fight, it looked like it was over with 30 seconds left. And he fought his way to, to a decision, even though he did lose pretty rough. It was it's Jim fucking Miller, man. He, he just he fought his ass off. He's a 40 plus year old man. Like I that was definitely fight night. Honorable mention would be Yuri Prohashka. And Alexander Rachik, if you want to talk prelims also. But in early prelims, definitely Bobby Green, Jim Miller. That one year he had me scared, dude. There was a few of our unanimous, like, lock picks that, uh, you know, there was a couple, of course, that disappointed. A couple, of course, <laughs> that I thought uh, we should have been cashing out. Jalen Turner, uh, Charles Oliveira. Um, but for the most part, you know, there were some scares. Uh, but... It, Guys like Yeri, uh, Kayla Harrison, um, Bobby Green, you know, some of those favorites that just, that was the beauty of this card was there was odds and, and betting lines on it, but you, you may as well just not even posted lines on that because all of these fights could have gone either way at any moment. Um, Matt, I'm going to you now. How how did you feel about the prelims? What are your takeaways from it? Um, are there any solid immediate matchups that come out of that? Um, and who did you have for fight of the night on just the, the two prelim sides? So regarding the fight of the night, I definitely think it was Jerry versus Rakic. I thought it was such a barn burner fight the first round. Uh, Jerry was um, kind of outgunned there. He was getting outstriked, and uh, the leg kicks were definitely huge. You can definitely tell that that was uh, 
it's taking a big effect on him. And the main thing that I have to say regarding the prelims is that Jalen Turner really fumbled the bag there. He was trying to get the walk-off knockout, and he should have followed up. You know, he should have went to the ground. He definitely could have finished him, but unfortunately, that wasn't the case. And Renato Moicano went ahead and round and pounded him to a TKO victory. That and, sorry, good. Um, and as far as the a matchup I would like to see for that. I would definitely like to see Renato Moicano versus Patty the Pimblet. That would definitely be a an exciting matchup, I would say. I like it. I like it. We saw um there was the video uh backstage footage of uh Bobby Green and Bobby Green has been calling for the Patty Pimblet fight too. Uh do you like do you like Bobby Green versus Patty or do you like Moicano versus Patty first? I would say I want to see uh, him, Patty Pimblett versus a ranked fighter. I'm not sure if, I don't think Bobby Green is ranked currently, but I would definitely like to see a step up in competition for Patty. We can find that out right now. Yeah, and I <clears throat> give it to Hanato Moicano. Um, I honestly, I, I really thought that Jalen Turner was a lock and looking back on it now it's easy to be like oh man money moicano you know everybody who bet on moicano were like i knew it was gonna happen he was this close to not winning the fight like in any other situation in any other universe jalen turner won that fight by by ko tko and um Gotta, I love Hanato Moicano. No disrespect. Love everything that he's doing. I love what he's developed into. You know, his not only his fighting uh, abilities, but his persona. He's doing what he's got to do to make money, to get big fights, to uh, get his name out there. Um, but in all honesty, I, I still feel like uh, still feel like Jalen Turner had that fight in the bag, and I feel like I. And the last, the finishing sequence, man, it just, it still rubs me the wrong way because Jalen Turner was on the bottom and he was covered up, but there were zero of those finishing shots that actually landed on Jalen Turner's head. They were all arm. Um, I understand that the position and not intelligently defending yourself, um, that all has to come into play, but uh I feel like that fight definitely could have gone a little bit longer. I don't feel like uh, Jalen Turner was hurt as bad as it looked uh, from the spectators' uh, perspective. Uh, Bobby Green, actually, he was 14. The new rankings, he moved down to number 15. Uh, Jalen Turner moved down to 12. Hanato Moicano moved up three spots to number 10. And um, I... Don't see Patty on here. This one's only going to 15. So Patty might be, I would say, probably in, you know, 20 at least. Um, but we got Bobby Green at 15 and Hanato Moicano at 10. So that's a that's a good matchup either way. Do you give Bobby Green 15 or do you give him 10 next? I'd probably go with number 10 after that impressive, uh, impressive victory over Jim Miller, man. That was such a... I thought he was uh, out of there in the first round. He, you know, he withered the storm and he got it almost finished. Jim Miller. That yeah, that was. I I say Bobby Green, Jim Miller is fight of the night for me. I would say Bobby Green next. I would love to see Bobby Green versus Hanato Moicano. That would be a fantastic fight. We know the styles make matchups, and we we know how that fight would go stylistically. We got one guy standing and one guy uh, looking for look shooting and looking for subs. Um, how about uh, Kayla Harrison, guys? Where do we where do we go with Kayla Harrison? Are you giving her Raquel Pennington? Uh, Matt, are you giving her Raquel Pennington next, or does she have one more before she gets the title shot? I would say in any other weight division, I would probably give her one more before the title shot, but there's not really anybody that's looking too impressive at 135 or um, that I would say that is a, is a clear number one contender. That, that division is a bit... Uh, it's a bit lackluster in uh, the skill department, I would say. Besides, Kayla. I was, 
Right, right. I was, you know, we were all skeptical on whether she would be able to make the weight. And if she did make the weight, whether she would be able to perform, whether she would be able to uh, be 100 percent the 24 hours following. Uh, she made 136. Uh, no one pound weight allowance for a title. So she would need to uh, she wouldn't be able to, to swing 136 if she was going to fight for a title. I uh, was talking with my dad prior to that fight. I was suspecting either way that she would either win this fight or not win this fight and then try to campaign for the uh, women's 145 division again. But what, who, who, you know what I mean? There's nobody, there's nobody that, that can do it. And she looked phenomenal against a former champion she looked dominant she did what we were all expecting her to do um she's been in the she's been in martial arts for a long time she's been doing a lot so who knows how long she actually plans to stay um i say you know if if they don't line up a, a raquel pennington juliana pena uh title fight coming up soon we got juliana uh juliana and valentina doing the ultimate fighter um so there's there women's divisions you know we we have like the top one two three in each one and then i feel like the rest of it you can mix and match uh not a lot of like big money fights in the women's divisions not a lot of big title fights big name title fights i think putting kayla harrison into a title fight would sort of revitalize that but since amanda nunez left like there's you know, we got Rose Nami Yunez, Wei Li, of course, just put on uh, an incredible fight, Yan Jiao Nan. Um, <clears throat> but as far as like, you know, those top two, maybe three contenders in the women's divisions, I feel like not a lot of big names, not a lot of big fights that you can make. Um, Joanna's gone, Rose is still going, uh, Amanda's gone, Jermaine Durand, I mean, just, just fought and and did well but you know not a whole lot of hype behind her anymore i think kayla harrison would probably be uh the most hyped fight in the women's division right now sean what's your thoughts what do we do with kayla harrison now oh you have to fast track her you have to uh women's divisions do better when you have a superstar ronda rousey she had the ego she knew how to talk on a mic no offense to people that speak different language or whatnot, but for the American people to get them into it more, you have to speak better English and whatnot. And that's like Ronda Rousey was great on the mic too. Uh, I do believe that there is a massive fight to be made. I don't think Amanda Nunes is done. If you looked on her Instagram, what did she do? She was posting like waiting on interview, like waiting, doing this the whole time. Yep. Say my name. Say my name. Where's my name being said? If she wins the title, you know Kayla Harrison has seen that. The reason she came to the UFC and she wanted to come originally and she was upset when Amanda Nunez lost was for Amanda Nunez. She will call out Amanda Nunez if she wins that title. I And I do believe Amanda Nunez, that competitor in her, you, you can't stop that. I don't care if you retire or not. You know you're the best in the world we could get Amanda Nunez versus Kayla Harrison coming within the next 18 months. You got to, man. You got yep. to. I mean, she's got time. She's not, you know, <clears throat> I, I'm not sure exactly how old Amanda is, but I know she's not pushing 40 just yet. Um, I think Kayla's older. Yeah, Kayla's, like I said, she's she's been around. She's been doing it. Like, she just got to the UFC, but she's not, she's no stranger to, uh, competition to to MMA and to combat sports and stuff too. So uh, she's not exactly like you know she is a prospect. She's a hyped prospect, but she's not exactly like an up and coming prospect. She's been doing it, and you know just like you said, man. Uh, th th other than Amanda, there's not a whole lot that's going to uh, spark the the women's divisions right now. Unless you know if somebody makes themselves no, we got. Uh, Wei Li, of course, super dominant. Um, I know twice, twice. Yeah, <laughs> I I know who uh, the I know who the logical next contender is for her. Um, 
And as far as uh, as far as like the women's flyweight division, we have um, Grasso and Shevchenko. Uh, we have the uh, for uh, Juliana Pena for uh, Raquel Pennington. Uh, as far as Wei Lee goes, I know who it is that is the logical next fight. It's going to be tough, you know, given circumstances and, and things that arise. Um, but I'm, I just want to see if we are all unanimous on this one. Sean, I'll start with you. Who do you give Wei Li Zhang next? Oh, Tatina Suarez, without a doubt. We get the dream matchup. Those You have the best grappler in all of women MMA. She, I saw her heel hook someone with two fingers, get her off her feet, and just get her in a heel hook in a matter of moments. I was like, how the fuck can you do that? I'm like, I've seen plenty of people rolling on a mat, and that is impossible normally. That's that's insane. She is better than that. She reminds me of some of the great men, BJJ black belt specialists out there. She reminds me of like a Charles Oliveira of the women's division, but her stand up is very skeptical, and Zhang Wei Li can definitely destroy her on the feet but the whole thing is she's not going to want to stay on the feet so it and we just saw Zheng Wei Li looks impressive on the ground too so we actually have a good grappling ah, fight so too good. such a good grappling fight so that's that's my dream matchup right there for those two that's what I want to see Matt are we unanimous is Tatiana up next yes I definitely think Tatiana Suarez would be an awesome matchup for them and uh, Whaley looked really good on the ground. I thought she had her uh, submitted at the end of that round there, and it looked like she was a bit wobbly getting up uh, after the, after that choke. That was – I was telling the people that I was watching it with too. They were like, oh, she's out, she's out. And I'm like, I, she's not exactly out, but if you're – when you guys are held in a choke for 15 seconds, whether you go out or not, as soon as they let go, you're going to need a second to just, you know, get – get your bearings back and everything so whether she was unconscious fully or not um there's you know there's a few seconds where the blood to the brain the oxygen to the brain it's all gonna take a second to kind of reboot um so i don't think that she was necessarily fully unconscious and like woke up i feel like she would have you know fallen over and not been able to move and like hold herself up but she there was a hard reset there for a good you know five seconds and uh some controversy people thought that they were using smelling salts uh the to bring her bring her back to life um but all in all that was just a banger of a fight it was an excellent fight and uh unfortunately it was preceded by the fight of the night the fight of the century the knockout of the century the baddest motherfucking fight we've seen in a long ass time sean i'll start with you my man um where does justin gaethje go where does max holloway go does he defend the bmf belt do we retire it and just say nobody's ever no one's ever going to be able to top that performance does he stay at 155 does he go to 145 what do we do with justin gaethje does this you know we we spoke a lot about this before uh in our ufc 300 episode how this fight shouldn't affect either of them in the rankings shouldn't affect either of their uh standings in you know title shot contention and what's what's up next for them uh what do we do with gaichi what do we do with holloway from here i'm gonna start with holloway uh i have an interesting take on gaichi though so holloway he could go any which way he wants but it already seems like he made the call out he wants to go for the 145 belt. And then after that, it really depends on what happens in in uh in late June. Because you have Michael Chandler versus Conor McGregor. You know those are two BMFs right there. And if uh either one of those win and they call the BMF out, you know Max Holloway is going to oblige to that too. So it, it all depends. Like he, he might he might ignore the 145 bell altogether if it's like Conor McGregor because you know he wants that win back, and he absolutely. might just ignore the belt and the payday. You just can't ignore that money. Like that's insane money. You put Max Holloway, Conor McGregor, five rounds BMF belt, the uncrackable chin. 
ah, uh, just what the hell? I'm um, just with that. It's like, so he has he has options after options after options. Like they, there's no wrong option for Max Holloway. Right. Justin Gaethje <laughs> risked it all. He took the fight purely off of Max's one tweet, and then oh, really? the fans pushed him behind it. He had everything to lose. He had Islam Makachev there. He had the BMF belt. He has nothing now when it comes to that. People are even say he's 35 years old and just got knocked out. You want to wait about a year. He's going to be 36. Should he just call it? And I'm just like, no. He should do exactly what Max Holloway did. His next fight should be Max Holloway, regardless of BMF belt or not. He should be like, I risked everything. I gave you the shot. I want it back. That's like that's that. my opinion on that. Give it give it six months. Make the call out. Have the fight in a year. Like regardless if he has a BMF belt or if he just beat beat uh, Ilya Deporia or loses to Ilya Deporia, I want that fight with you back. That's sweet. that would be my opinion on that. Sweet take, sweet take. I did not see that coming at all. Um, Matt, how about you, my friend? Uh, what do we do with Gaethje? What do we do with Holloway? What do we do with the BMF belt? <clears throat> Starting with Gagey, I think he's going to have to wait until the Islam versus Dustin Poirier fight. And if um, if Dustin Poirier does end up losing that, I think it would be a good idea to go ahead and do the trilogy with them too. Um, I think it wouldn't be too bad of an idea, especially they both have a... Max has a... I mean, not Max. Uh, Justin has a KO win over him, and then Dustin has a TKO over, win over him. I'm sure they're both going to want to get that back. And as far as Max Holloway, as Sean said, he has a lot of different options. Um, I'm pretty sure that he should go back down to 145 personally. I think that it would be a good idea for him to try and regain that title back. But I hear that Ilya wants, he doesn't want to fight unless it's for the BMF title. It's on the line. So I don't know how deserving he would be of that BMF title, but that's what I would say. I... I really, I hope that Justin Gaethje doesn't hang it up. I feel like, you know, people are very quick to write people off. It's just, it's people smoking casual substances mainly. So we really don't need to fucking you know, focus too much on uh, their opinions. And hopefully the fighters, hopefully, you know, everybody else doesn't lay too much stock into that too. Because Justin Gaethje, this time last week, was the baddest man on the planet. All it takes is 25 minutes against a Max Holloway, somebody who was, who a lot of us, myself included, looked at as a sacrificial lamb, somebody that's just stepping in to be a big name fight on the biggest card of all time when several other matchups that they were looking at fell through and, and didn't, didn't show up for him. So I hope that Max Holloway, uh, I hope that they keep the BMF belt. I don't think that, you know, I mean, how could you see the the Nate Diaz, Jorge Masvidal fight for as long as it lasted, Gaethje knocking out Poirier, and then Holloway knocking out Gaethje? How could you see all of that and be like, I don't ever want to see any of those ever again? I mean, if you don't have the BMF belt, if you don't have the aura that it carries, if you don't have that aura of fight where you bring in two of the baddest dudes and rankings have no play, uh, what happened in the past has no play, just two of the baddest dudes, and let's let's see what happens. Guys with that, you know, that belt, that style of fight, that's going to bring stuff like that out of dudes. You know, Max Holloway said it himself. This is the baddest motherfucker belt. This is the baddest fight for the baddest motherfucker. If I'm up, you know, four rounds to one, five rounds to one. If I'm 50, 45 and a dude, if he's completely battered and beaten and I got 10 seconds to just coast and win the fight, that's not what this is about. We're, we're going to the center. We're throwing down. I don't care if justin gaethje's best chance at winning this fight is for me to just stand in the middle and slug it out that's the risk i'm willing to take because this is for the baddest motherfucker belt and that's what it's going to bring out of people and to be like oh we just got to retire the bmf belt don't have it anymore nobody can top that we don't know that we don't know that because nobody saw that fight going the way that it went and we never would have had it 
if it wasn't for the BMF belt. So I think that we keep the BMF belt, whether Max defends it or uh, vacates it and we we start all over with a new matchup. I think we got to keep that going. Um, I think Justin Gaethje should still be in the top of the heap. Uh, if he's not after Poirier, uh, we do like Justin Gaethje versus Charles Oliveira rematch. Um, Justin Gaethje versus a Michael Chandler rematch, depending on how him and Connor goes. Justin Gaethje versus Connor McGregor. I mean, if Connor McGregor beats Michael Chandler, do we really give him a title shot off of that? Michael Chandler ranked, you know, top 10 or so, but somewhere around eight ish. Um, does coming back after two losses to Poirier and then beating Michael Chandler warrant the title shot? I don't think so. I think Connor has got to beat somebody else. Um, so having, having Holloway versus the winner of Connor and Michael Chandler, I'm awesome with that. Having Gaethje versus the winner of Connor and Michael Chandler, I'm, I'm good with that. I'm happy with those either way. Um, but you guys are right. I think Max Holloway gets to do whatever the Volk he wants. And if, if it's a title, if it's a BMF, if it's just a money fight, you know, like you said, there's... There's no way he's passing up a Conor McGregor fight. Nobody's passing up. You see how long Michael Chandler just waited for it. There's no way my, Max Holloway is is passing that up, regardless of what else is on the table. Um, last thing, we'll, we'll go one more quick breeze through. Is there anything else? Um, you know, our bets, our, our, our picks, we, we finished uh, above 500 again. Our picks record was at uh, 646. And our bets record was a 696. Um, so we're all still above 500. We're all uh, still above 600. We're all doing uh, just rolling right along. Is there uh, any anybody on the main card that surprised you? Is there uh, anything else that we need to cover? Matt, we'll go with you. One more breeze through for the main card on UFC 300. Uh, I think that's pretty much, you got it. we got everything there. Um... I'm interested to see what Alex Pereira's next move is. Um, I know he said he did want to fight at UFC 301, um, but he did break his toe again during the 300 fight. So I'm not sure if he can make the turnaround that, I think it's like a month away. So I don't know if he can make that short of a turnaround with the broken uh, toe. Right, That's and who do you give him? Who do you give Alex Pereira next? Uh, I would probably say Ankalaev. But I would also like to see a Tom Aspinall fight too. But I think he should probably wait for the heavyweight if he was going to go up and gain the weight properly. Because Aspinall is a is a natural heavyweight and he's a big Huge. boy. So. Huge. Yep, I agree. I agree. We got us. Alex Pereira, another dude, give him whatever the hell he wants. He wants to jump weight classes. He wants to clear out the weight division. He wants to fight for the BMF title, whatever. Give him whatever he wants. Sean, last breeze through. Anything else you need to get off your chest about that main card? Yeah. Um, I said this a long time ago when Surreal Gone fought John Jones. And it's in the same thing with uh, Amanda Nunez and Irene Aldana. There's something called the GOAT factor. When you fight one of the goats, you either are going to step up to the plate or you're going to basically fight however they want to fight and you're going to crumble. We can't deny, I'm not saying that Alex Pereira is a goat, but we cannot deny these fighters are fighting the way he wants to fight. They're saying, oh, I'm going to, even Ankalaev is already saying, I'm going to try to knock him out. Like, you guys are idiots. <laughs> what are you doing? Like I kept saying that Jamal Hill could win by getting in a clinch. He has great clinch elbows, get the, opens up the takedown there, and he has great ground and pound even though we don't get to see it often. We see him knocking out people. He's like, no, I'm going to stand there and knock him out. Two minutes into that fight, I'm like, well, I lost this pick. I didn't even need to see the knockout happen. I knew I lost the pick. And I was like, damn, I'm the only idiot that picked Jamal Hill. Like, <laughs> it, it's, it's, I'm seeing this with Alex Pereira that people just fight differently when they fight, like, Jamal Hill never looked like this. Even with the Paul Craig thing, it was a weird thing. His elbow popped out of place. It was it was very weird. It was uh it Jamal Hill could have easily come back the next round done well if his elbow didn't pop out of place. And it like this was without a doubt Jamal Hill's worst fight. And you see this with quite a few other people. In general, Yuri did not look good in that second round against 
against Alex Pereira. Like the first round, he looked great. He did what you're supposed to in the second round. He kind of got hit a little bit and then he shot because he was hurt. And then you just left that head unprotected. We just saw Curtis Blades do it to Almeida. He did the same thing, just elbow, 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 night, night. That head is, that temple is exposed. So I'm, that's the biggest thing I want to see. Like if he moves up to heavyweight, I kind of want to see either way. Tom Aspinall is going to be fighting a GOAT factor kind of situation. He's going to have a John Jones or he's going to have an Alex Pereira. It's like, I kind of, I think the more the pressure is on Tom Aspinall. It's a free ride for fucking Alex Pereira. If he goes up there, he loses. Dude, he was just a middleweight a year ago. Like, come on. Right. It's a free ride. So I, I kind of want to see how this narrative goes. Very interesting. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see where they go from here, and a lot of great matchups that could be made. Uh, we'll see how they go with it. Hopefully, it all makes sense in the end. Um, but you know, one thing is for sure: UFC 300 is going to be extremely difficult to top moving forward. Um, let's get into the uh, UFC fight night that we got coming up it'll be the weekend that this episode drops it's UFC fight night Mateus Nicolau versus Alex Perez um, going through the main card we're gonna kick it off with uh, a 170 pound matchup Tim Means versus Euros Medic uh, Tim Means very seasoned uh, veteran, 40 years old, that one number that we all hate to see next to a fighter's name. Um, he's opened as a plus 210. <clears throat> he's got 33 wins, 15 losses, and one draw. He has 20 KO wins, five submission wins, eight decision wins. He's two and three in his last five, coming off of a KO win over Andre Fialo. Going, again, going up against Euros Medic, who's nine and two. All of his wins are by finish. He has seven KO wins, two submission wins. He's three and two in his last five, and he's coming off a submission loss to Mictebek Orobai. Apologies, that's as close as I'm going to get to that. Um, Tim Means, you know, he's been around forever. He is the dirty bird. He's been through multiple eras of uh ufc fighters uh he is always in the fight he's very well rounded um you know he's got 20 ko's so he's not afraid to stand with people who have knockouts people who are looking to get the knockout win against him um euros medic is a bad dude he uh opened as a <clears throat> minus 260 which i think is I, I think we're not giving Tim Means enough credit on this one, but I do understand the uh, odds discrepancy. Uh, I think that if this fight stays standing, it's anybody's guess. Anybody could come away with this one. It's going to be tough to lay uh, any significant amount on Tim Means in this one. Like I said, just because he's 40, he's weathered, he's seen it all, he's done it all. The veteran experience will come into play in this one if the fight progresses past one and a half rounds into the later minutes of it. Um, I'm going to go with Euros Medic on this one as the official pick. You know he's going to be looking for a finish. Um, so I'm going to have him getting it done inside two and a half. But uh, definitely, you know, for the odds and for the uh the stature of tim means you you got to sprinkle a little bit on a two to one uh veteran who has 20 ko's and five submissions and is coming off of a ko win he's riding uh uh riding momentum and <clears throat> he's able to get it done at any point at any time he's game he's not going to back down from a uh, a scary prospect like medic uh ultimately i'm going to go euros medic by stoppage under two and a half uh, but just to be safe, sprinkle a little bit on Tim Means, maybe throw him in on uh, an underdog uh, parlay with him and one other guy on this one. Uh, the uh, other fights on this one, we have a women's 125 pound fight and then a heavyweight fight. Uh, Matt, I'm going to go to you next on this one. We have uh, a heavyweight fight between Austin Lane and... Yonata Denise, I believe. Tough names on this one again. 
uh, Austin Lane and Yonata Denise. Matt, let us know where we are going on this one. Yeah, so we got Austin Lane, that's 12 and four. And then we got uh, Jonata Denise, which is six and zero. Oh. And honestly, Austin Lane, I know he's coming from the NFL. He kind of looks awkward on the field. Looks like he does hasn't really found his style yet. I was watching some tape from him and it just kind of looks awkward on the feet. He hasn't really um, got his own way of doing things just yet. And I ultimately think that Denise is gonna knock him out. Um, you saw I went down with Tafa, and I don't think that it's going to be a good night for him. Oh, baby. That's, I understand. Yeah, Austin Lane, coming from a different sport, too. Sometimes it's just difficult to find because you, um, I've done multiple sports, and I can attest that you learn things like footwork, you learn body positioning, you learn body movements, and trying to go from one sport to another, you have to unlearn a lot of stuff too so i get what you're saying about uh trying to find his his rhythm try to find his style and his groove on that one too um if uh if denise gets it done uh are we going first round second round third round are we going under one and a half under two and a half what's the round setting on this one i would say second round i think that it'll be like a competitive first round uh you know feeling each other out and then the second round um he finds his shot within uh, the pocket I like it. I like it. We got Denise by uh, second round stoppage on that one as the official pick. And uh, moving on next to uh, a sweet women's 125 pound fight. We got number 12 ranked Ariani Lipsky versus number 13 Kareen Silva. Sean, I'm throwing it to you on this one. Let us know. This is a close matchup. Odds are close. Fight is close. It's 12 and 13. About as close as it gets to uh, exciting fighters in this one. Let us know where we're laying our money. I don't believe the odds are right on this one. I think it should be almost a minus 200. I really do. I think Kareem Silva is such a phenomenal prospect. Like, we have someone here that we got to be paying attention to now. So in like a year and a half from now, when she's fighting the number two ranked fighter, we could be like, we know. We know. I'm I'm all in on Karina Silva. I'll give you a little bit about Ariana Lipsky real quick. She's 17 and 8. Her last fight was a win. Seven first round finishes. Same reach and same, uh, basically same height. She has, uh, uh, Lipsky has a one inch height advantage. Um, Lipsky has six KOs, four submissions, and uh, she's on a three fight win streak. Uh, Kareen Silva, 17 and four, eight fight win streak, all wins by finish. All 17, all of them by finish. We're talking yeah, like women's we're 125. Talking, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, we're talking like Shavkat Rogmanov style right here. This is ridiculous. And then nine KOs, eight submissions, exactly like Shavkat kind of shit right here, <laughs> like right across the board. And then seven fight submission streak. She's just mm. she grabs something, you're tapping. And seven of her last fights, she has won, has been in the first round. Yes, she's 3-0 in UFC, and then she's 1-0 in the Dana White Contender Series. But, so, obviously, Ariane has been around since 2019 in UFC. She has seven or eight UFC fights. She has two losses in the UFC. <clears throat> Understandable. Like, and she definitely has fought higher quality fighters. I just, I see Silva as being an incredible prospect. And she is strong in the cage, too, so... She will bully you up against the cage, get you down. And I think a submission can happen. And if not, she she can knock your ass out. She really can. Even though a lot of her knockouts were early in her career. But, like, if you're too worried about a ground game, how often have we seen a wrestler knock out someone because you're too worried about the grappling and you get, you get a, a, a knockout or TKO by a grappler? Um... Bo Nickel. I know, get yeah, Bo Nickel. Like, I do believe this could be. I, I'm. I could be just fanboying here because I'm really one of these people that I'm really looking for an exciting push in the women's divisions. And I see this, and I'm like, oh, we got something here. Please, I'm. I'm just riding the coattails here. I'm hoping it happens. Like, <laughs> so I'm definitely fanboying here. I hope it happens. I'm rooting for Silva just so we have something 
for the future. Just to, like we know she's just getting better. So right. that, I'm going with Silva. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with submission again because I mean it's only happened seven times in a row, so I don't think <laughs> I can pick anything else. And, and I'm, I'm 25, man. Yeah, and yeah, in a 20 25, and I'm gonna have to go first round because seven of her last fights have been in the first round. So I'm just going with statistics here at this point. Like I'm not gonna bet against it. First round submission, Silva. First round submission, Silva. We got a second round. Uh, that was a KO for Denise Matt, correct? Yeah, uh, KO for Denise. KO, nice. And I'm going Medic. Uh, Medic under two and a half. I got to go KO, man. I got to go KO. I think... Uh, I think Tim Means is going to try to stand with them. I think that's his best route. I think he's going to try to stand with them. I think he's going to get put down. Um, so we got uh, we get we have three finishes on this main card so far. Going into uh, the co-main and main events, very likely we could have an all-finish main card on this fight night. Um, we have uh, in the co-main event exciting fight, exciting fighters, two hundred five light heavyweight. We got number eleven. Ryan Spann opened at a minus 195 versus Bogdan Guskov opened as a plus 145 underdog. Now, uh, Ryan Spann, we all, we, we've seen him. We, we, we know what he's capable of. Uh, he's 21 and nine, six KO wins, 12 submission wins, three decisions. He's three and three in his last six coming off of a decision loss to uh, Bogdan Guskov 1.0, Anthony Smith. Um, and then he's going up against uh, Anthony Smith 2.0, Bogdan Guskov 15 and 3, 13 KOs, tw uh, two submissions, another all finish uh, win rate for uh, Bogdan Guskov. He's 5 and 1 in his last six, coming off of a KO win of Zach Pauga. Pauga Chaka. Um, Ryan Spann, one of these guys that you just, every time we see him in there, you know, I've come to expect a Ryan Spann finish. Every time I see him go up against somebody that I think he is going to have a tough time with, he just somehow pulls out a first round flash knockout or uh, a second round submission or something. And he's just one of those guys that I personally keep counting out. And it's so hard for me to not do that again, especially with Guskov looking the way that he's looked all finish wins and uh, at plus money. That's, you know, for me, honestly, I'm definitely going to throw a Tim Means, Guskov uh, and Alex Perez parlay together because I think all of those guys are capable of doing it. And coming off of the weekend that we did uh, with UFC 300, you know, I feel like anything can happen right now. Um, Sean, I'm going to start with you on this one. Let us know what you got for Ryan Spann and Bogdan Guskov. First thing I'm going to say is Ryan Spann should be 4-2 and two in his last six fights. I thought he won that against Anthony Smith. And I like Anthony Smith a lot, but I think that was a robbery. Um, so, but um, Ryan Spann's one of those guys that, God damn, you just don't know what's going to happen. Like, <laughs> I pick him. He loses. I don't pick him. He knocks the guy out in 35 seconds. I'm like, Jesus Christ. Uh, he is a parlay buster for me. He really is. And it, it hurts me. It really does. But I'm my bet on this fight, like if you had to make a bet, is under one and a half rounds. That is my bet because this, someone's going to damn sleep. If the, this ends up being a three-round decision, Dude, it, it almost reminds me like of her heavyweight picks. I swear that's a, where our worst picks are, is our heavyweight <laughs> picks. So, like, the, that's what I'm thinking with this is, like, it has to be under a round and a half, right? Like, it has to be under a round and a half KO. It's like, who do we want to pick on this? I'm going to – oh, god damn. I, I want to pick Ryan Spann, but I have a weird feeling about fogged in here. I really do. Right? I'm going to pick Ryan Spann and get ready for my ass to get busted again by Ryan Spann. So, I'm going <laughs> to pick – We'll go first round KO, Ryan Spann, but I would not be surprised whatsoever if Bogdan got it done. 
I like it. I like it. It's, dude, like I said, man, that's, it's so hard for me to not throw, uh, throw down on Bogdan at plus money. But as soon as we do that, as soon as we do that, Ryan Span is going to just starch him inside 30 seconds. Just the stupidest, yeah. it's whatever you think is not going to happen is, is exactly what's going to go down. Matt. Are we unanimous on this one? Is it going to be a stoppage and who's going to get it? I 100% is, think it's not going to go to the judges. Um, these guys both have lethal power in their hands. If you look at Bogdan's last fight, he hit him with every single shot on his way down. And that was so crazy to me. I have to go with Bogdan after that last performance. Um, yeah, that's that's what my pick is. When does he get it done, and how does he get it done? Uh, I would say second round, kind of the same with that heavyweight fight that I was saying. They're going to feel each other out in the first round and ultimately go for the kill in the second round, finding his openings. Is it going to be a KO? Oh, for sure, 100%. Yeah. I'm... Uh... We're we're split on this one, and I'm just gonna let us be split on this one because I cannot confidently break this tie either which way. I think uh, I'm definitely gonna have uh, parlays, and I'm gonna lay a little bit on each one either way by a finish, first round, second round. Um, but I think you know, especially the way that my my 300 went. If I for sure think Span's going to get it, Guskov's going to sleep him in 30. <laughs> if I think Guskov's going to get it and I get that plus money, Ryan Span is going to Superman punch knockout. Um, but I'm going to say it's going to be under one and a half. So I think first, second round, it's going to be under one and a half for sure. And that's that's the only confident pick I have on this one uh, other than a KO. So lay a little bit on each one uh, by KO. Uh, you should be able to make it out alive, should be able to make a little bit of coin on this one too. Um, initially, my pick is Ryan Span, but sprinkling on Goose Gob just for uh, official measures. Uh, I will take Ryan Span on this one. And uh, if it, if I got to sacrifice the record for it, you know, I'll, I'll lay a little bit on Goose Gob for, for uh, good measure. And then that takes us to the main event for this one. We have, uh, finishing up with a 125 fight, we got number five, Mateus Nicolau, open at a minus 180 versus number eight, Alex Perez, plus 150. Um, I think those odds have probably moved a little bit since then because I don't see how anybody doesn't lay a little bit on Alex Perez in this one, man. Um, as you see, my name on this one, Central Valley Boys. Shout out to Alex Perez. Everybody back home in the Central Valley, California. He's from Hanford. I'm from Modesto. I got, I've had family living out in Hanford. Been out there a whole lot. A lot of good fights out there in the Hanford Lamore area over the years. Um, so shout out, shout out to the Valley Boys. Um, Mateus Nicolau, 19, 3 and 1, five KO wins, five submission wins, nine decision wins. He is. Five and one in his last six also. Coming off of a KO loss to Brandon Roy Ball, though. So looking to bounce back against Alex Perez is 20. Yeah, that does say 24 and eight. Holy hell. Um, five KO wins, seven submission wins, 12 decisions. He's three and three in his last six. Coming off of a decision loss to Mohamed Mokayev. Um, let me just make sure that I get it. 100% correct on this one. Uh, Alex Perez has had a lot of fights uh, scheduled and canceled. And uh, the one thing that I wanted to point out was that the... Oh, you still got me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Froze up a little bit there for a second. Um, but Alex Perez uh, does have... A, a, he's riding a, a three-fight loss streak. However, those three losses are to Davis and Figueredo, Alexander Pantoja, and Mohamed Mikhaev. Two former, well, current champion, former champion, and dude who is 100% going to be fighting for the championship in the near future. So, not, 
not anything to really hang your head about you know when you're fighting the best in the world you lose it just it happens it happens um i i i love alex perez you know like i said uh loyal to the soil i'm going with alex perez i'm gonna open up the picks on this one uh i'm gonna take alex perez as the dog in this one i think he's gonna be uh surprising i think he's gonna be able to uh get a decision when i'm just to be safe i'm not gonna say unanimous i'm gonna say it's a split because i think it's going to be a very competitive fight mateus nicolau is just he's an animal man he's an animal he's very tough in that division um rank number five for a reason he's got stoppage wins he's got decision wins he's looked good in uh his his streak leading up to the last fight to the to the roy ball fight and again you know mateus nicolau losing a brandon roy ball nothing nothing to really hang your head about nothing to turn your nose up at nothing to write him off about um i'm officially gonna go with alex perez on this one i think he gets the decision but won't be surprised if it goes the other way matt we'll start with you on this one who do you got in this main event between nicolau and perez i'm gonna have to agree with you there i think perez definitely has this one he's gone up against world-class fighters and even though he has lost he has, he's still going up against the world-class fighters. And I don't think, uh, I think uh, Matthias Nicolau is is a good fighter, definitely. But I don't think he's there in the terms of, you know, like Davis and Figueredo or, <clears throat> or like just these world-class fighters. Um, and I think, I think that he's going to be able to pull off, pull it off by a decision. Okay, so that's two for Perez by decision. Sean. Are we going unanimous? Is this going to be a dog lock? Or are we going with the uh, obvious answer, which is the animal Mateus Nicolau bouncing back after that Roy Ball loss? I've been tossed up on this fight just because strength of schedule, like you were saying there. Alex Perez has been fighting absolute killers. Um, Mateus Nicolau, I'm not too worried about the KO because it was against someone that is known for his power and very long and tall for the division. While Alex Perez is not nearly as tall and long as Roy Val is. Uh, I could easily see a Mateus Nicolau decision, and I could see a decision either way. I don't think Nicolau has the grappling of the Figueredo whatnot to get the submission that Alex Prayer, uh, Perez has lost two of his last three fights by submission. Um I'm going to I'm going to go with Nicolau by decision and I could like you you went with split decision in the opposite way like Alex Perez I could easily see it split decision either way but I'm going to I'm going to go Mateus Nicolau by decision could be split could be unanimous I just don't see a finish in this one Understandable understandable it, this is a good matchup it's one of those ones that you know it, despite the discrepancy in the rankings, despite how far apart they are, that top, you know, echelon of that division is so damn close. So damn close. You could take any of, you know, the top eight or so, mix them together. You have no idea what's going to happen. That's so close in that one. Very competitive and trying to find a, uh, trying to find a clear cut uh, contender for Pant uh, Pantoja these days. Am I right? Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't, got you know, I wouldn't fight him. Pretty much left right. the division. Exactly. exactly, exactly. And there's, you know, not a whole lot. They've, they've done a lot of mixing and matching on this one. Uh, <clears throat> these guys have all fought each other at one point or another for the most part. So, you know, either way that it goes, we're, we're probably going to see uh, quite a few more rematches. Uh, moving forward, especially, you know, if Alex Perez, <clears throat> excuse me, gets a, gets a, a definitive win, gets a, gets a, even an impressive finish. If he comes out and just, you know, gets a submission, I could see him bumping up going from number eight, all the way up to, you know, fighting like a Kai Kara France or, uh, you know, a Manel, Manel cop would be a nice one after that too. And, uh, with Nicolau being at number five, there's you can only move up from there. You know, you are fighting down with Perez, but like we said, it's essentially a pick 'em with all of those top eight or so. Um, Steve Ursag at number ten. <laughs> oh man, that's gonna be that's gonna be a fun episode. Um, but we we have uh, 
this one is going to a decision unanimous from all of us. We have two for Perez and one for Nicolau. Um, before we wrap it up, if you guys had to throw down on a fight of the night candidate, who is taking home the performance bonus on this one? My initial pick, I'm going, uh, I'm going Spain and Guskov. Sean, who you got? Oh, I could definitely see fight of the night being the main event. Because it's it's a, gonna be a razor close fight in my opinion. So it it and the flyweights always are competitive. They're good fights. I understand some people they want to see the finishes, the knockouts, but if you want to see great technical fighting, watch the smaller guys. The flyweights, they've always been incredible and very entertaining in my eyes. So I'm gonna say they're gonna get fight of the night. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great pick on that one. Matt, who is your fight of the night pick for this one? I'm also going to have to say Ryan Spann versus Bogdan Guskov. You know, that's I think that's going to be such an exciting fight. I'm looking forward to that fight the most on this card. Um, I know for sure a knockout is going to come. Yeah, just only a matter of when. Yeah, let's hope it goes for a little while, too, you know. <clears throat> let's hope we can get, get our money's worth on this free fight night. Um, the last one, we got to do lock of the week for this one. Um, my lock... I'm going to have to say Euros Medic on this one. Uh, not particularly because of the odds, but just because Love Tim means very difficult to pick a 40 year old fighter in this day and age. Um, I'm going to go with Euros Medic as my lock on this one. Uh, Sean, who's your, who's your pick for the lock of the week? Hmm. Uh, my big lock of the week would be minus one and a half on that span versus Brogdon fight. But <laughs> uh, if we're picking fighters, I like Silva a lot, but I know it's a very close fight. But I think Medic is probably the best bet fighting a 40 year old. And uh, yeah. Right. That's Understandable. Uh, one. Understandable. Yep. Very difficult. Very difficult. Matt, who you got for the lock? <clears throat> Yeah, I'm also going to have to say Medic, you know, he's fighting somebody that's 10 years older than him. And, you know, I think his youthfulness is going to really come through and he's going to be much faster and just more athletic than him overall, especially because of the age advantage. Yeah, it hurts to say, man, Tim Means, he's been around. He's done it all, dude. We love him. We love the Dirty Bird, but very, very tough matchup. If he's able to get it done, definitely going to be a performance of the night. Um, but... That's your lock, everybody. Euros Medic, lock of the week. Uh, fight of the night, we got uh, two for Span, one for uh, Nicolau and Perez. And that's going to do it. That's going to do it. It is great to be back with you boys. I missed you guys so much. We can't go that long without seeing each other again, okay? I just I can't <laughs> handle it. I can't handle it, all right? Just like with fighters, they got to have a fight book. I got to have an episode book, man. Whether we do an interview or an episode or a reaction or a breakdown, we can't go this long without seeing each other again. I just I get separation anxiety when I don't have when I don't have the fight pit in my life. Um Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. This has been the UFC 300 reaction and UFC fight night. Nicolau versus Perez breakdown picks and predictions. Uh, we are going to see you guys again very soon. We have a lot of great matchups coming up. Uh, we're just <clears throat> right now looking to try and make it until June, man. June is going to be popping. We got title fights. We got Connor and Chandler. We got all kinds of crazy stuff coming up. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to The Fight Pit on YouTube. Uh, we're also on Spotify, The House Call Sports, High Fight IQ. Make sure you follow all of us on Instagram. You can get all of our uh, content, all of our picks, all of our breakdowns. We got everything that you need. I'm Drew, High Fight IQ. You know the drill. I am with sean mr bad beat sean ryan sports on instagram and maddie matt talks mma thank you all for tuning in we will see you on the next one peace